Hey guys, Michael here. Today's video is going to be similar to my riser base video. I have the conveyor attachment that I need to install on my P2 and I have a project coming up that um, I need to use this because it's too big for the bed of the laser. So I need to put this together. I'm going to record the process, not really do a lot of editing or anything. It's just going to be looking down at this thing and then zooming in on the P2, how to install it. So if you're into that sort of thing, stick around. Let's get to it. Here we go. There's a peek inside the box at the base part of it. Take this out. Make sure I didn't forget anything. Nope, that's it. So these are the pieces for the main part of the conveyor. So. Let's get out the instructions and start putting it together. Looks like the instructions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 different languages. Where am I at? Right there at the front. Okay, let's skip past all that. Okay, so it looks like we jump right into the P2 and put this part into the P2 and then attach these arms to it. Looks like before I can put these arms in there, I have to assemble the feet on the bottom of these arms. I'm going to go ahead and do that now since I have this on the table. Let me get this out of the way. All right, so according to this, take these, slide them onto here. So they have a J shape, and this is going to match that J shape. And you're going to slide them on here. There is a set screw right here that you use the Allen key for. Loosen up a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Slide it on there. Keep it centered with your fingers. And then you can tighten this down. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on this, just enough to 
put some tension on it, and that won't go anywhere. You're going to repeat the same process on all four legs. They call these riser blocks to make um, the base of this a little bit higher off the tabletop. I suspect if you don't need these riser blocks, you can take them off for adjustments. Doesn't really say too much about it in this instruction manual. So I'm going to go ahead and put them on here because it tells me to. Okay, now that I have these on, I need to attach a leg to each of these arms. I'll loosen up this nut right here. And when this is loose, you have to pull down a little bit of tension to make that nut keep from spinning, or you can hold your finger on it. Okay, there. So as you, you can see here, I can push on it. It gives me a gap. In doing so, I'm going to line up this rectangle with this slot. Slide it in there. And then I'm going to turn this. Right, that's in place. Repeat the same process. All right, so the next thing you need to do is get the conveyor feeder and put it inside the P2. Let me get this all out of the way so we can do that next. All right, so what I'm not sure how to do is how to film this process so that you can see what all is involved. I'll try to do my best to get some good camera angles. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. We'll also get bad camera angles like looking at my back as I'm taking out the honeycomb. I seriously need to clean that thing. I might do that today too. All right, so the instructions say to take your crumb tray out, which I've already emptied out, and put this in position 2A. Because this is kind of dirty, I'm going to flip it over just so there's not a lot of debris on the bottom. And I'm going to go down to 3 because, well, no, let's just leave it at 2A and see what happens. And then it says to slide this into this gap between the crumb tray and the frame. The reason they have you put this tray in here is just to support this while you're actually setting it up. It has a cable in here. You want to make sure it's on this side, not getting caught as I'm putting it in. And it looks like 2A is a little bit too high with the crumb tray upside down. Let's try number three. Yep, number three works. So that, again, that crumb tray is just to hold it in place while you do this. I need to put this cable in the inside. Let me untwist this. Okay, now that we have this sitting in here loose, you're going to take the long screws. There's only four of them. And you're going to have two screws on this side and two screws on this side. And what it says is don't tighten them up until you actually get all four of them in place. One thing I found is this cable is prone to getting pinched in here. So as you're putting this in here, you know, pay attention where the cable is. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So that it kind of holds it in place. There we go. That way it just won't go anywhere. I'll worry about that, addressing that later. Also, uh, you can look down, and I'll show you a better angle of this, but you can look down, and when you put this in there, you can see the two holes, the screw holes, and you can just take these, drop them in place, and start tightening them up. Again, you don't want to tighten them up all the way until all four are in place. Now that one was really hard to do because it literally falls in place. Now you're supposed to use your Allen wrench that came with it. However, I have power tools, so why not use the power tools? This is a miniature powered screwdriver by Fantic. I'll put a link in the description down below for this thing. This thing's really cool. Um, so I'm not going to use the power part of it right away. What I want to do is turn this to make sure I'm catching the threads properly. Once I do so, then I can 
Hit the power. All right, let's check this other one. Make sure I'm catching the threads and not cross-threading it. And then hit the power. You can pick up this. There's more longer threads than you think. So if you put one hand underneath this piece and lift it up. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. And then let's move on to the other side. The part you're actually screwing into is this piece right here with these threaded inserts. There are four of them. You're actually screwing into, I believe, the first one and the last one, or maybe first one and third one. And then looking down into the P2, there is a hole right here and a little hole right down there. You'll want to look down in there until you see those two holes line up and you can put your screws in there and tighten them up. There we go. All right, that is snug and in place. I'm going to push this in all the way and let's move on to the next step. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is slide the arms into the frame of the conveyor. This is what the ends of the arms look like. It's a plastic molding with some spring pieces on top and bottom. And those, what those do is kind of lock it in place here because they have the little lips. An easy way to get this in here, or two different ways to get in there. One, you can push it down on the bottom first and use your finger to push down the spring, lift it up, and then push it in and slide it across. Or since the spring is not on the ends, you can put it in at an angle. And when you put it in an angle and kind of twist it straight, it'll automatically compress those two little plastic springs. And then you can slide it in here. Just be careful sliding it in. Push the whole thing in at one time and you'll use your short screws to lock this in place against the conveyor frame. All right, here we are on the back side of the P2. Um, I want to share with you a couple of things that uh, you need to know about the conveyor belt or the conveyor feeder, sorry. So this is a aftermarket exhaust. Normally you have a three inch exhaust that's about yay, yay deep and you put your hose on there and the hose kind of drops down. If it drops down, it's going to catch the material as it's coming out of the conveyor. So what they do was they give you a couple of these stick on anchors. You stick it to your uh, body of the P2 and use these feed it through and you can hold your hose up out of the way. I have a 90 degree four inch adapter by Lakeshore 3D. I have it facing to the left. I'm going to change that and face it to the right. What that's gonna do is two things. One, this is a four inch adapter, so it gives me much more airflow to exhaust the air better out of the P2. And then also, if it's return returning this way, it'll already be up out of the way and prevent the material from actually snagging on the hose because as you can see, it's about this far, it's gonna be this far, the hose will be dropping down this way, it's already out of the way. I don't have to have these anchors, these plastic things stuck to the body of the P2. Also, when it comes to the legs of the conveyor, they look identical, except for there's a little marking on one of them. This little marking is to let you know that this is the one that goes on the back side of the P2 inside of it. This one without the marking goes on the front side. The reason being is this piece right here is metal, this piece is plastic. Why they didn't just make them both out of metal and then there's no confusion. I don't know, but I've seen this happen so many times in the Facebook group where they put the plastic one on the inside and their plastic one gets all melted and, and cut up. So pay attention to that marking. Put this inside the P2. The laser goes forward and back. It doesn't move you know, up and down like it normally does. When it's using the conveyor mode, it only goes forward and back or side to side like a uh, cricket. So it's only going to go over this mark. They put it metal to protect it so that it doesn't melt it. All right, I need to modify my table. I don't have in-feed and out-feed tables the same height as this. However, I do have some long 12-inch uh, wide boards that I can mount to here and use that as sort of a temporary in-feed, out-feed table setup so that I can use my uh, or make my project. 
So let's pause this video and I will start putting all that together. I'll try to share with you what it looks like, or at least maybe take a picture of it. Um, I won't go into much of the details unless you want me to later on. And if you do, and you're more curious about how I do it here on this particular setup, every setup is different. Like not everybody has a kitchen island table and a piece of a uh, three quarter inch plywood on top. So every setup is different. However, this may give you an idea of how you can set up yours if you don't want to have a full size table set up. Um, again, everybody's different. Some people put hinges, some people put legs that swing up and out and there's all different kinds of ways of doing it. So let me get this thing ready and I'll show you how I'm doing the in feed and out feed tables so I can get started on this project. All right, my prototyping is all finished up and this is the solution I came up, up with to add an out feed table to this. What I didn't want is to put hinges on the table and to have these arms that lift up and down because I would lose my storage space underneath the table. Plus there's some drawers in the front that I keep uh, little accessories and whatnot in there. So this is the solution I came up with. I took a scrap piece of wood and mounted it to the bottom of my plywood here. I then took this piece of what was gonna be a porch sign, cut it in half, and then clamped it to the top of this piece. And then with it clamped, held down, I was able to drill holes and put dowels in here. Now the dowels are not permanently attached yet, but I'll glue those in and make sure this is all flush. But the way it works is with the dowels in place, I can take this, it already has a little bit oversized holes, and slip it on top of the dowels, just like that. And then all I have to do, take a little clamp and a scrap piece of wood. And what I can do with that is I can hold it in place, open it up, clamp it in place, and that's it. Now my table's finished. If I want to take my level, I can level the table or level the top of the machine and level this. And of course, if I need to adjust it, I could just loosen up this clamp and lift it up and down and then clamp it down. That's the solution I came up with when you want to put the um, conveyor legs on here. Just open it up and you can actually assemble them in here. Then I can take these legs and actually assemble them. And that's really far in there. I can assemble them in there. This piece, now these aren't long enough for this piece right here. Let's pretend I have the extensions on here. Then you can put the extensions and rest it on the table. Now the table is only 12 inches wide, that's okay. I can put these out towards the edge of it because these screws will keep it from wanting to fall. I can always put a small piece of uh, basswood or something right here just to keep these flat. And I think this has actually worked really well for just small pieces I wanna run through the conveyor. If I wanna have a longer conveyor, of course I'll work out something different, but I think this table is gonna work out just fine. So that's all I want to share with you all. I was able to assemble the conveyor and the conveyor was actually really easy to do. As you can see, there wasn't much to it. I have my legs here. I can assemble those and get the extension add to here. It's just going to make it a little bit longer. My table's finished. What I need to do now is actually move to the front, put the same table that I have on the back on the front so that I can make my project. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time.